Hey, what's going on? This is Jerome. Today is a very good day. As you can see, I have with me Santa Claims, <laughs> my good friend, Chris Edwards. He is also a, a good pool buddy, but he's a retired VA Raider. And I thought I could not think of anybody else but him to bring on to the channel to help those of you who are going through you know, the medical board and those of you who are about to leave service and thinking about VA disability and wondering whether or not you should apply for those benefits. So I am going to just have Chris do a brief introduction of himself, but we're just going to jump into some of these questions. That's really what you're here for. And that's really what I want to provide for you. All right, Chris, go ahead. Take the floor. Well, Tell us about yourself. Let me, let me remove this so we can be a little serious here for a moment. <clears throat> My name is Chris Edwards, and, and as Jerome said, <clears throat> uh, I did retire from the VA as a Raider. Um, I spent, uh, retired from the military after 20 years, 10 months, two weeks, not that I was counting. Um, went to work for the state of Illinois as a veteran employment rep. And while I was there, one of the things I found was that, to, that there were <clears throat> training programs for employment that could be obtained if somebody had a, a, a disability status. So I would help guys put their packages together. And boy, I thought I knew everything there was about filing. And then I went to work for the VA and realized I didn't know squat. Um, hmm. There's an awful lot more that goes on behind the scenes. So I've been on both sides of the street where I've seen I, you know, I've made the same statements. Well, you know, they don't like us. They, you know, they, they, uh, uh, they're trying to deny us and everything else. And then when I got to work for the VA directly, I saw that that's not the case. Sixty-eight percent of VA raiders are disabled veterans themselves. Really? So, so, you know, I mean, that's a large percentage. In fact, we're told before every training session, if at all possible, if there's any evidence at all that you can use to grant, do so and do so at the highest level possible. So that makes that whole, you know, they want to deny you kind of a, a moot statement. There may be some idiots that, that <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a bad apple in every bunch. Okay, so there may be some that do that, but the majority of them that I've ever dealt with I've never run across anybody that says, oh, they're lying to us or whatever. Um, I've also spent a little over probably nine going on 10 years helping veterans on Facebook uh, to, to put their claims together. Not because I do anything fancy. I provide them with the information so they can put it together themselves. See, I think that there's something to that, Chris, where service members and veterans need to be or should consider advocating for themselves first. Oh, yeah. You know, learning the process in order to advocate for themselves. We've, in the military, you had to advocate for your career. Why is it that when we leave the military, we can't advocate for our benefits? <clears throat> Some people, when they leave the military... It's like they want to leave everything behind. No, that's that's a dumb thing to do. If you have something that worked for you in the military, take that with you and, and just learn how to adapt it to your current lifestyle. Anytime I did something in the military, I researched it. So I would look mm. at the regs. I would look at the, the guidance that's in there. You know, how do I do this? So that I didn't have to have a, uh, like if I'm, say I was applying for, you know, officer training school or applying for uh, a specialized training program. <clears throat> I didn't want to be rejected. So I figured out, okay, here's what I need to do to, to pass this. It's the same thing with your, your VA disability. You need to have, if nothing else, get access to uh, the internet version of, of the 38 CFR, which is the 30, 38 Combined Federal Regulation, because it's going to tell you, like, uh, <clears throat> let's just take sinusitis. Sinusitis, if you have uh, two to three 
uh, episodes of, of sinusitis that is treated with antibiotics like sit for six weeks, then it's or uh, three to four uh, non-incapacitating episodes that are treated over-the-counter medications, then it's 10%. If you have uh, four to five treated with antibiotics or more than six treated, you know, over-the-counter, then it's 30% or, you know, whatever and so on. So the, at least then, if you write your statements, personal statement, which we'll get into, um, to that measure, you're going to make it easier for the raider to make a decision. The easier you make it, the better off you're going to be.